question that I'd like to talk with you about today, and that's the question of how are you going to manage yourself when you're in conflict with someone and you're really trying hard to be clean and healthy, and so you uh, you go into the assertive mode and you try to talk about the things that you know are right and best, but the other individual who's uh, engaging with you just isn't buying it. You know, one of the things that I talk to people about in my anger workshops and, and I uh, emphasize in my counseling is whenever you have conflict and whenever you have tension, inevitably there's going to be some form of anger that shows up. And then the question that I have at that point is, do you have a well-conceived game plan regarding the ways you're going to manage your anger so that you can handle it in a way that's going to be constructive, not destructive? And then I make the distinction between assertive anger and aggressive anger. And let me just kind of give you a real quick little overview of what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to want to see what we can do when this assertive thing just doesn't seem to work the way you want. When we talk about anger in general, we're talking about the emotion of self-preservation. You, you become angry because people are um, uh, speaking ill of you and they're not giving you very good uh, uh, understanding or they're not coordinating life with you. And so your anger is that emotion that taps into your sense of self-preservation. And when you're in your self-preservation, you're wanting to stand up for your convictions. You're wanting to stand up for who you are as a self-respecting individual. You're wanting to make sure that your needs are being well addressed. And, and that's just part of what's going on when that emotion is alive inside of you. Now, as that emotion is there, you can do that aggressively or you can communicate that assertively. And when we talk about being aggressive in your form of anger, we're talking about standing up for who you are in self-preservation, but at the other person's expense. It's like you're saying, uh, you know, I, I, I'm putting you in charge of making me feel good. And if I have to guilt you into it, or if I have to coerce or uh, plead or convince that I'm going to do whatever I can, and there can be a rudeness in the way that you go about it. And that's why people tend to think of anger as a pretty negative emotion because, well, it's being handled in a way that makes the other person feel poorly. The assertive individual, on the other hand, recognizes that anger can have a legitimate function, but if it's going to be taken seriously, you have to do it in a way that's going to be palatable to the other person. And so when we're talking about assertiveness, we're talking about speaking about your needs, speaking about your convictions, but in a way that continues to show dignity and respect to that other individual involved. Now, I'll give you a, a contrast of how this can sometimes work. I remember speaking once to a woman about her need to be assertiveness and stand up for herself. Frankly, this, this lady had been everybody's doormat. And we talked about all the, the, the uh, how-tos and what-to-dos and, and also that she could be a little bit more firm about who she was and be more self-preserving. Well, about a week later, she came back to my office and she said, oh, Les, you would have been so proud of me. And then she gave me a list of all sorts of people that she had just chewed out royally. And I mean, she, uh, as she was talking, it's like uh, I could tell that she had been talking with a, a rough tone of voice and a blaming and an accusing style. All of the stuff that we had talked about not being, uh, that was the aggressive form of anger. And she was proud of herself that she stood up, but in the long run, that wasn't going to serve her well at all because the other individual guaranteed isn't going to be able to receive that well. Now, as a contrast, I remember talking to another woman about how her husband was very difficult and then she had members of the extended family who were very overbearing and uh, stubborn. And so we talked about her self-preservation style and the need to uh, be firm and to, to have her conviction but do it with a sense of respect. And when she came in to see me the next time, she said, well, actually, I did it just the way we drew it up. And she was really proud of herself. And as she told me about some of the episodes that were involved, it's like, okay, you're catching on. Now, in her case, she still didn't get good results. Now, the first lady, we would expect not to get good results because she was speaking to people in such a rude way anyway. But this second lady had done it just like the textbook would say, and yet um, all she would get would be an argumentative reaction, or she would get a, yeah, but what about you kind of response. I call that boomerang communication. Uh, she would get all sorts of uh, um, defensive or uh, that's not true kind of responses. And so many times when I coach people up and when they catch on and they catch on well, they can still come back and say, well, Les, I tried that assertive style and it just didn't work. 
Now, when we get to that place, uh, I, I'm not going to immediately say, well, I guess it didn't work, because first we have to ask, well, what is your definition of the word work? For assertiveness to be appropriate, what does that mean? And so we have all sorts of different things we can look at. For example, were you trying to, uh, to change the other person's mind or maybe get them to, uh, to a higher level of cooperation? Were you hoping that that individual would show you respect or uh, maybe that other individual would validate the wisdom of your convictions? Were you hoping that the other person was going to say something like, hey, great point, you're making good sense? Uh, were you wanting to have some stimulating adult conversation because of the assertions that you had? Those are very good desires. Were you hoping that maybe uh, the communication would be uh, something that could be anchored in mutual regard for one another, and in the end you would have a much higher level of understanding? Is that what you were trying to accomplish when you were going into the assertive mode? Well, most of us would say, yeah, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. And so when that uh, uh, doesn't work out well, then we think, well, what am I supposed to do? For example, it may be that you did all the, the things with the mindset that I just described, and the person just walks away. Or maybe they respond in a very forceful and a harsh uh, manner. Or it could be that they just uh, go into what I would call the point-counterpoint style of communication. Everything that you would say, they're going to hear you for the sake of trying to explain to you why that's not the case or why that wouldn't work. And so then there's a blame uh, that comes along and a counter accusation. Maybe as you're being assertive, the other person starts crying. <laughs> it's like, I didn't shoot you or anything. Why are you doing this? Or maybe they just uh, uh, have this, I don't care attitude. And so here you are, you're trying to do the things in your uh, conflict resolution in the way that the textbook says you need to do it, and yet you still may get these kind of responses. How are you going to manage? Well, let me see if I can give you maybe five tips in terms of how we can uh, uh, handle this in such a way that uh, you can still maintain your sense of well-being even when that assertiveness doesn't work, at least in the way that you're hoping, uh, that you were hoping it was going to work. Now, first and foremost, uh, you can kind of tell by the way I'm talking here already, check your motives. When you're being in the assertive mode, exactly what are you hoping to accomplish? Because if you're trying to convince, or if you're trying to control, if you're trying to uh, plead your case, or maybe even induce a little guilt, then ultimately, first of all, we're not even going to call that assertiveness because uh, that's starting to go into more of an aggressive style, but ultimately that's not going to work. Uh, let's just uh, recognize that assertiveness uh, is something that can happen even if the other person doesn't respond to it well. It doesn't hinge on you getting the correct response because uh, when you're trying to convince and control and all the rest and then it doesn't go, then basically you're saying, well, uh, for me to be healthy in my anger management, I've got to get good responses from the other person. Well, chances are you wouldn't be in the angry place in the first place uh, if that other person was a cooperative individual to begin with. And so check your motives. If you're trying to convince or, or plead, uh, plead your case, and that's it, and make the other person change, then uh, you're probably going into a wrong direction. Well, that leads to a second thought, and that is sometimes, even when the other person doesn't respond well to you, sometimes the assertiveness works in the sense that it's good for you to hear yourself stand up for you. It's good for you to, to know that when other individuals still don't want to be cooperative, the bottom line is uh, you still have your convictions and you're not going to just suppress it and hold it in. You can stand for yourself and, and it's good for you to know that you can do that. And then let's also go to a third thought and that is um, you need to see yourself in your assertiveness as being what I would just simply say you're an other person. Now, uh, what you're wanting to have, ideally, is a sense of coordination. I'm going to be clean in my communication with you, and I hope that you can be clean in the way that you respond back to me. But if that doesn't work out well, well, the bottom line is your assertiveness works in the sense that you're staying healthy. If they want to go in an uncoordinated uh, way and go into their unhealthy place, you're, you're not required to go in that direction with them. 
Uh, you can still stand firm and take what I call the nonetheless approach, which is anchored in the thought that says, well, though you have a different thought, nonetheless, I, I feel like what I just told you makes good sense. I'm going to kind of stick with it. And so uh, this takes us to a fourth or a, a fifth thought, and that is, uh, excuse me, a fourth thought, and that is clean assertiveness at least allows the other individual to know that you've got a good definition of you. And you're not required to have to uh, uh, to run everything through that other individual before you're going to be okay. You're going to be healthy, and you're, you're going to have a, a good sense of who you are with or without their coordination. And so it, it's good for you to just stand up and let it be known, I believe in me, whether you don't do or not. And, and then finally, you want to uh, take what I call the, the attitude of delicate detachment. There are times when you're trying to be assertive and stand firmly for yourself that you'll hold firmly nonetheless to consequences, to stipulations. You don't have to go into the repeat mode. You can just simply say, I know that you think differently from me, but I'm going to go ahead and stand on what I believe in. And then when they want to argue, you unhook. And basically, I call that delicate detachment. You're not going to unhook in a mean sort of way, but you're going to unhook in the sense that says, I don't feel the need to just go round and round and round with you. I'm going to hold my ground. But if you want to continue to argue, I'm not going to join you at that place. And so assertiveness can work in the sense that you still are being true to yourself. It would be nice if it would be coordinated with that other person. But the bottom line is uh, you want to have the sense of saying, I, I'm going to go ahead and, and, uh, and stand for what I believe in. It'd be nice if you could uh, work with me. But if that's, the ca if that's not the case, I can't let you set my pace. You always have choices even when you're angry. And, uh, and while it would be good for coordination to happen, you can stay your ground and you can stay in your healthy mode, even if it has to be in a solo kind of way. Now, there is one thing that I want to ask you about as we close here, and uh, I'm kind of uh, leading to something that we have coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, I'm talking to you today about assertiveness. I want to ask you the question, have you ever been exposed to somebody that's a really controlling person? Do you have, or maybe several persons who are highly controlling? Here you are, you're the individual who's trying to do things right. And these persons just want to have so much of a, a control over you and they want to tell you what to do and they want to dictate what you know, you're supposed to feel and think. Does that ever happen to you? And then I want you to think what tends to occur on the inside of you as you're engaging with that highly controlling person. Most folks, when they're in the presence of someone who's controlling, can talk about anger today, uh, can become angry or they can become defensive and their communication goes down. It tends to bring the worst out of you. Now, the reason I'm asking this is uh, I want you to know that in just a few weeks, it's actually going to begin on September the 12th uh, at 6.30 uh, p.m. Uh, Central Time. I'm going to begin a four-part series called Free to Be, and we're going to be talking about how you can respond to the controllers in your life. And, uh, and so it's going to be uh, an interesting time for us to, uh, to have some good uh, uh, talk and discussion. And we're going to open it up in kind of a workshop uh, situation in the sense that I'm going to want to hear from you, and I'm going to be actually responding to you even as I'm giving you some of the information that's going to be a part of that workshop. And to that effect, I'm going to ask that you do, uh, do me a favor. And that is in the comment box right now, uh, beneath the video that you're watching, I want you to see if you can give me two questions uh, regarding some of the most important things that you'd like to know about how to deal with a controlling person. And then as you do, then I'm going to be able to integrate that and talk with you about it as we go through on this four-part series called Free to Be. You're going to be hearing much more information about this as we go along, uh, but just know we're going to be uh, working on uh, September the 12th, Tuesday, and then Thursday the 14th, and then we're going to go down on September the 19th, uh, and then uh, Thursday the 21st of, se uh, of September, and then we're going to have that four-part series, and I think you're going to find it to be something that's going to be hopefully life-altering, and it's going to give you some real good challenges as to how to uh, get out of the grip of that controlling person. Don't forget to put those two questions in there because I really want to hear from you.